Have you heard about real estate landing pages or commonly referred to as sales funnels? Well, in this video, I'll elaborate on the importance of real estate landing pages and show you how to create effective landing pages that actually produce results. So let's begin. Hey, it's Jaime. If we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. First things first, we need to put landing pages in their place. They are tools. Don't make it any more complicated than that. Oftentimes you hear landing pages this, landing pages that, and then you get confused on what they actually are. Just understand that they are tools that you get to use. That's it. And there's two primary ways that they are used. One is as a full functioning website, and then the other is as a lead capture tool. Quite a few people have taken a liking to landing page generators, so they have built their entire website on those landing pages. They embed their IDX sites, their contact information, testimonials, pictures, and everything that you see in a traditional website. So as a consumer, you don't see anything different. You just think that it's their website, in which it is. It's just a different way of creating it. Now, the way that most people use landing pages is for leads or sales. If they're in the service business, they use it as leads. If they're in the product business, then they're using it for sales. Pretty self-explanatory. And the reason so many people gravitate towards landing pages for their leads or sales is because they are flexible and very easy to create. So that's providing more context. However, let me reiterate that landing pages, or also referred to as sales funnels, they are a tool, nothing more. And the reason I say this is because many people lean too heavily on these landing pages to make the entire sell. And oftentimes they forget the actual offer. The offer is ultimately what's going to drive people giving you their information or giving you their credit card. So I want you to keep that in mind as we jump over to the computer where I show you how to create effective landing pages. It's not going to matter how pretty, how awesome, how functional your landing page is if your offer stinks. Okay, now let's build a landing page or a sales funnel. For our tutorial today, we are going to be using ClickFunnels. This is the software that I use. It's a landing page generator or a sales funnel generator, whatever you want to call it. This is the one that I use. This is not the only one on the market. There's lead pages. There's, um, let's see, Instapage, and there's various others that you can use. This is the one that I would recommend as I'm, that's the one that I'm using. So let's go with the classic funnel builder. You can go down the new way of creating it, which is a cookbook builder process, but I am an old soul, it sounds like. So I'm just gonna click there, and it's gonna guide you into a solution that's gonna work for you. It's gonna guide you into templates that are going to work for you. If you go down the collect emails option, it's gonna build a simple, easy to use uh, template, which is gonna include the landing page and a thank you page, which when you hear sales funnel, it basically that's what it is. It's guiding people to the sell and it's guiding people to becoming a lead for you. But as far as a sales funnel, when it comes to the funnel itself, that's the simplest funnel that you can build, an opt-in page and a thank you page. On the sales page, it's going to add a cart. So if you're collecting payments online, that's where you would go. And if you're hosting a webinar, it'll give you the templates that you can use. I typically go to create a custom file from scratch. However, we're gonna do collect emails so you have a good framework to go from. I'm gonna do home buyer template and then just video just so I know and can identify it down the road. We're going to build a funnel. Right off the bat, it's going to give you some templates to work from. You don't have to select their templates, but they are generally pretty good. So you're going to get a ton of options to go through. I'm going to scroll down so you see 
I mean, you're not going to see all of them in detail, but you're going to see the quantity that you have available to you. So those are the templates that you can build from, but check these out. Remember when we selected the emails option, had you selected the sales, it would have started you here with a template that is conducive to sales. So this adds a cart for you. If you're conducting a webinar, if you have a membership, if you're doing affiliate sales for your membership site or for your courses, and so on and so on. So for our purposes, we're going to breeze right through this. So you see the core elements on how to create an effective landing page. So I'm going to go through and select a template that's gonna do most of the heavy lifting. This one looks pretty good. Let's preview it. That is one sexy landing page. Again, for a landing page, most people use landing pages in exchange for leads, right? So people that are sending people to a landing page, it's either for leads or to sell their product. They want to get to the end goal as quickly as possible. And the exchange, essentially what you give is the offer. From, from the lead side, if you're offering a CMA, if you're offering a cheat sheet, a guide, or whatever you're offering, that's the exchange. That's what you offer. And in exchange, they're going to give you their contact information, i.e. become a lead. From the sales side, there's a product that you have and that's what you offer. And they're going to exchange their money to obtain that offer, or to obtain that product. So that's the exchange. And the landing page just simplifies everything to its bare bones. It will have an element of sales just depending on what you're using the landing page for. But as far as exchanging uh, an offer, as an example for a real estate agent, exchanging your services to become a lead, then you provide something of value and only that through your landing page. You can use it for a website, but most people use it for lead aggregation. Let's go with select that template. That seemed cool. As you're setting up your funnel, as you're selecting your landing page or setting up your landing page, you can go to stats so you see the amount of clicks, the amount of views, and the amount of people that opt into your offer, opt in and become leads. As they become leads, they are populating right here. And depending on what level of click funnels you have will depend if you can download your contacts and have certain integrations and certain functionality. So just keep that in mind, but this is where they're going to populate regardless. And then on the settings, this is something that I like to adjust right off the bat. I named it the home buyer template video. I'm going to make that the path. I'm going to make that part of the URL. I would select the URL that I want it to go through. And then if you have a favicon, I think that's how you say it. If you have a favicon, which is essentially it's that little thing. Let's see if I can scroll this down. It's that little thing right there. If you have your own unique one to your page, that's where you would inject the URL. So you would all you would need to go is come up here, go to account settings, and then include an asset. So it's an online asset and it's labeled just as that as an asset. And then it's going to give you a unique URL once you upload it. And you would come back here and inject that URL. When you are setting up for the very first time, it is very important that you set up your tracking mechanisms, your Facebook pixel and your Google tag. This is where you would go. Your Google uh, global site tag would go right here because you're trying to cover the entire sales funnel. And then from the Facebook pixel side, this is where you would inject that main code if you need help with Facebook Pixel or the Google tag embedding that into or finding it and embedding that into your into your funnels, let me know. But there's also going to be a video in the description below showing you how to actually do that. All right. Now, if you're selling a product, then you would integrate the Stripe account. And we're just going to go to save and update settings just so we keep going. Again, I want to show you the elements. We're not going to go through copying and pasting everything because I just want you to show you, I just want to show you the key elements that you need to do. You need to work on to have that effective landing page. So I don't want to stall by copying and pasting and doing all that fun stuff. All right. That is the header up there. Now the subheader. When you go to automation, you can 
if you have, depending on the level of ClickFunnels that you have, you can send emails directly from here and that's where the automation would go. So you can actually send the emails and the, uh, the text directly from ClickFunnels if you have the upgraded account. If not, then you would need an integration. Then when you go to publishing, it's gonna publish just this landing page. So we are just working on the landing page that you saw at the beginning. To keep yourself from being uh, distract, I'm sorry, to being confused, I highly suggest that you label these. I highly suggest that you label the steps because if you're going to do integrations down the road, especially through Zapier, you want to make sure that you can identify the steps within their funnels. If you leave the opt-in and thank you as it is, when you're setting up automations through third parties, and you select a template, it's gonna get hard to identify which actual step you're trying to automate or integrate. So we're gonna update that funnel step so you see what it looks like. And I go to edit the page, um, the test settings, and I like to edit this as well. So everything updates at once. And you see here, I have that path that I created a few seconds ago, home buyer template video opt-in is right there. And going over to the thank you page, you would do the same thing. I'm not gonna go through and show you that, but let's select a template. It's not gonna matter at this point. Just select a template that you like. That would be the thank you page. Again, we have the landing page, which serves as the opt-in funnel, and then the thank you page. And you see it still doesn't have a unique URL. That's where you would go over here and do the thank you page. So I, I would label them this way. I would update the funnel and it would show right there. The reason it still has ClickFunnels is because when I went to settings, I didn't select a domain. I plan to archive this, this particular um, funnel because I'm not going through and optimizing it quite yet. So that's, where, that's why you see ClickFunnels. But let's look at the functionality. I want you to see the flexibility that you have with ClickFunnels and how easy it is to edit. So I'm gonna go through the highlights and what you absolutely need to know, and I'll ignore the rest. The key is for you to get proficient enough to get these working and get leads and get sales versus you becoming the absolute expert in ClickFunnels. That's not the goal. All right, so this is the desktop view, as you can see here, and then you have the mobile view, what it would look like on your mobile. So that's pretty cool. We're not gonna worry about the apps part. When you go to settings, you see the integration. So if you have an email autoresponder, you would connect through here. SEO metadata, this is something that you have to edit every single time you create a, uh, a page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, uh, home buyer. And I'll just put opt-in. You would go through and provide a description of what it is, the keywords, your name or the author, or whatever you're trying to rank for, the images that you want to include, which would all populate through here, which my camera is kind of hiding. You're set there. The tracking code, this is if you're tracking conversions, especially on the Google Ads side, if you're doing a conversion ad or doing the actual conversion from the Google side, then this is where you would inject the code. However, this is where you would see it from, a, from the ClickFunnels side. If you're doing a conversion, you actually don't do that on the landing page or the opt-in page. You do that on the thank you page. I'll show you what that means in a few seconds. All right, so custom CSS, this should have some custom, yeah. So section right there, height, blah, blah, blah. So essentially this little thing that you saw right there, it's a little custom setting. If you know how to code, then you can inject a bit of custom code to make things make things a bit more animated, make them a, a bit more different. And this is what the template already came with. If you don't like that, then you just delete it and you're done. You don't have to keep it. Notice, let's see, where do we go? Okay, now the background. If you wanna adjust the background, select whatever you want it to be. We're just going to use, let's use that house. You see the background has been changed then topography which essentially is your font and styles we'll click just so you see it 
the font, color, themes. And then general, the biggest thing here is you can hide the affiliate badge, which essentially it's ClickFunnels little logo right here. You can hide that. If you don't want that to show up, all you need to do is flip that switch and put hide and you're done. And then a pop-up, you can create a pop-up as you're scrolling away or as people are scrolling away from the page, you can have a pop-up show up, hey, don't, uh, don't X out just yet, you forgot to download X, Y, and Z. So essentially giving yourself another sell, a split second sell, so people can come in and actually give you their information versus just Xing out. That's where you'd set that up. All right, and then the rest of this will be better explained through here. A section is highlighted in green. So everything that you see green right up here, over here, up, down, and then the settings, cop clone, which is copying, saving, and trashing. This is an entire section. If you want to add another section, you just go to the plus button down here. You select the width, and you've created an entire section. So you see here, right there. And if I want to move this section up, I just do that right there. The next thing is the new row. So you, the row, which is highlighted in blue. Down here, this is our row, right here. Uh, that little blue box. So you can create a row and you can select how many columns you want within that row. I'm going to go with three and then you see three different columns. Within each column you can select, within each row, you can select as many elements as you want. So elements are highlighted in orange. And to give you an idea what elements are, you can add a headline, you can add a image, you can add a form, you can add a video, you can add a button, you can add Essentially, it's what you see here. These the the green and the blue, which is the section and the rows, just speak more to the structure. And then what people actually see is the elements. You can do the headers, you can do videos, you can do images. It's just that simple to create. So you can go through here and add countdown clocks, shipping information, all this fun stuff. So just know that's where you would go. And if you don't like what you've done, you just delete that and it is gone. For our purposes, to create a very simple opt-in, we want the email, we want the phone, and we want the name. So I'm going to, well, I'm sorry, let me move this here real quick. Instead of doing what I was about to do, which I don't like doing, if I would have gone here, it's just going to mess up because I messed up right there. If I would have gone here, the I can select my input, and I don't like that I have to start from scratch. I like keeping the same format as our as the template that's already provided to me, and I lose that format if I start from scratch. So I like to just clone it and clone it again, so it gives me a good presentation, and then just edit the insides. So here I want their phone number. And that's what I address, phone number. All right, and then name, I would just put full name right there. Full name here. And there we go. If I wanna move it, I'll move it up here. Now the full name, email, phone number, and then the action, which is this right here, this is the button. You set the action if you want it to submit the lead or if you want to open up a pop-up after that, if you want Facebook update, go to a URL, go to the next step in the funnel and it won't submit your information, you can do that there. It provides essentially the enter button where people give their information and then they go over to the next landing page. So this is the basic bare bones. Think. The thing, the thing to remember here is that you want to create as little friction as possible for people to give you their information. You want to offer something on your ad or wherever you're uh, showing your information or wherever you're offering your information, you want to make it super enticing to where people land here and give you their information as quickly as possible. You won't, don't want to confuse them with all of this contact information, these pic, uh, these pictures, these testimonials, this other stuff, these buyers, sellers, investors, 
None of that. This is a landing page. Again, you can use it for your website. However, most people use it as a sales funnel or landing page to maximize their lead generation. And this is how you do that. All right, so we're going to click Save. Then we're going to go to Preview so you see what it looks like. And there you go. I'm not going to worry about making it pretty right now. I just want to show you what it looks like. Then we're going to exit. And I'm going to show you the thank you page. Because I, want to, I want to highlight two things from the thank you page. I'm not going to worry about setting up all the other stuff that we did on the landing page. But one quick thing about the conversions that I was talking about. The tracking code. When you go up here, if you're setting up a conversion for Google Ads, your tag, your conversion tag needs to go right here, which is a smaller subset. It's about three to four lines that you just copy and paste here. And it may actually be two to three lines that you just embed here. And the reason that you embed it on the thank you page is because to get to the thank you page, they first have to go from the landing page to your thank you page. So the fact that the tracking code that you embed here fires off or triggers, it leads you to believe, and in reality it is this way, that they went through the landing page and gave you their information to land to this page. So that is where you inject your conversion tag from Google if you're running Google Ads. And if you're running Facebook Ads, let me just exit out real quick. All you would need to do is take the URL. Facebook has made it considerably easier. You used to have to do the same thing, but all you have to do is take the URL, this, which operates on the same methodology that they're, the reason that they're on this URL altogether is because they went through the landing page and gave you their information. So they convert it. One quick favor before continuing, please be sure to hit the like button so this video's reach is magnified and others benefit. All right, so let's go to edit page and then I'll speak about a strategy to get you better leads or more quality leads. Download your video. So when people go to the landing page with the expectation of receiving your offer, they're gonna submit their information and then they're gonna land here. What most people do is give their, uh, their offer here, whether they're offering a guide, whether they're offering a video, whether they're offering a cheat sheet, whether they're offering a, whatever it is, a PDF, they offer it right here or they deliver it right here. What I suggest so you maximize the quality of your leads is to give your uh, lead magnet or your offer via email or via text, whatever form of communication you obtained from your lead that's where you're going to deliver your goods. That's where you deliver the prize because it's going to maximize the opportunity that your leads are going to give you correct information. So if they gave you the wrong email and you meet them with a thanks, grab your video in your inbox or check your email for your video, then they're going to be like, oh, darn, why well, gave my wrong email? And I really want this prize or I really want this offer. So let me backtrack and input the correct email so then I can get it. And you're gonna be surprised. Whenever you do that, you're gonna find that there's one email or one lead coming in and then a couple of seconds later, you're gonna see another email or another lead with the same name but a different email. So they corrected or self-corrected their email so they can actually get the offer. So that's just a pro tip right there. I don't suggest that you deliver the goods on the thank you on the thank you page. Just leave that as a thank you page and guide them over to their phone if you sent the lead magnet or offer via phone or send them over to their inbox if you're delivering it via email. So these are all the things that you need to be doing to optimize your landing pages and optimizing your lead generation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Outside of that, if you found value today, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so we can talk again soon.